Hello, I am Annalise Bolt, and today I will be discussing ACL injury prevention in skiing. I am currently a Sports Med 3 student at South Tahoe High School, and I was asked to design an informational ACL injury prevention program. I decided to work with Jason Bolt, a 50-year-old male who has been skiing his whole life. My client has never had any previous serious knee or ACL injuries. I made it my goal to prevent any possibility of ACL injury for the future so that my client can continue to ski for the rest of his life. The anterior cruciate ligament is the most commonly injured knee ligament and is responsible for stabilizing the knee during rotational and hyperextensive movements that occur during cutting and pivoting activities. It prevents the tibia from slipping forward and acts as one of the main stabilizers of the knee joint. ACL injuries include tears that are classified by grades 1, 2, and 3, 1 being mild damage and 3 being completely torn in half. Symptoms of an ACL tear include a pop when the injury occurs, pain, knee swelling, weight-bearing problems, instability, and stiffness. ACL tears are often caused by non-contact twisting or hyperextension movements. In skiing, the ACL is essential because it stabilizes the knee during turns, prevents the tibia from slipping forward when landing jumps, and helps the knee adapt to different terrain and snow types. ACL injuries are common in skiers because there is high demand for quick knee rotation and fast reactions. Because the feet and ankles are locked in place, a lot of movement comes from the knees. This puts skiers at high risk for over-rotation and hyperextension of the knee. To prevent this from happening, it is important that the muscles around the ACL are strong enough to support the knee and help decrease the amount of force put on the ACL. These muscles include the hamstrings and quadriceps. I made it my main focus to strengthen my client's hamstrings and quads to prevent future ACL injury. I designed a two-week program including testing and training with positive results. I tested my client's wall sit time, single leg wall sit time, and single leg jump distance. Then I gave my client exercises that would help him improve his times and distance at the end of the two weeks. My client's average initial wall sit time out of three attempts was 53 seconds. His average single leg wall sit time for both legs was 26 seconds. And his single leg jump distance for both legs averaged out to 31 inches. To improve my client's test results, I gave him exercises that would strengthen his hamstrings and quads. These exercises include glute bridges, squats, lunges, step ups, box jumps, and single leg Romanian deadlifts. These exercises helped my client improve greatly. His wall sit time increased by 22% with an average time of 65 seconds. His average single leg squat time increased by 15% with an average time of 33 seconds. And his single leg jump distance increased by 17% with an average resulting distance of 39 inches. Overall, my program was successful and if my client continues with this program, he will be at less of a risk of ACL injury when he skis. Thank you for watching.